I wanna talk about frequently asked questions when it comes to pre-employment background screening. If our clients are asking these questions to us every day, you're probably wondering the same thing. Whether we're talking to an HR advisor, an HR director, a VP of HR, a business owner, or a consultant to a business, they typically have these same questions, so I wanna answer a few of the ones that come up on a regular basis. All right, let's get started. This one comes up quite often. Most clients wanna know how long does a typical background check take? This is a great question. Most background checks take anywhere from 24. The most important thing here is that the clock starts when the applicant authorizes and discloses. So the quicker the applicant can provide their identifiers and disclose and authorize the background check, the quicker the process can get kicked off, the quicker the report can come back. There are situations where there's hits to be verified in jurisdictions that require manual searches that can extend this. Our agency turnaround time is usually in the range of one to two days on a maximum. Clients do often ask, what screening packages do your clients typically run? This is a good question. We try to match the background screening packages to meet, meet the risk factors in the position. We have some small business screening packages that we often recommend. We start with the basic and go to the more comprehensive. A basic background check will often involve verification of identity, SSN trace, national criminal database with sex offender wants and warrants, and a criminal history going back seven years. And then we build from there with the verifications of employment and education, as well as federal, driving record, and a variety of other things. But you do not need to run the same background check package on every employee. A background screening package should meet the risk tolerances of your company, any compliance requirements, and generally the budget. Remember that the more searches that you conduct, the more expensive and the longer those will often take. Does it make sense to run different background screening packages on different positions? Yes, definitely. If you have someone working in the warehouse who will not be driving, it doesn't make sense to run a driving record on that person. However, if you have an administrative assistant that will be doing errands and driving, I would, we would add on a driving record. If you have an executive who you wanna verify prior education and employment and check for federal white collar crimes, super, super important. So you definitely would change the background screening package based on the position that you're hiring for. Do we have to get authorization from the prospective employee to run a background check? The answer is yes. If you wanna do a compliant pre-employment background check, you need authorization from the applicant and you need to provide specific disclosures based on where the applicant lives or works to meet the requirements under the FCRA and any other state requirements. Are there additional disclosures or authorizations needed for specific states or services? Yes, there is 100%. If the applicant lives in a state like California or New York, there's specific disclosures, there's even county level disclosures for people that live in certain counties throughout the US. Also, if you're doing verification of employment and education internationally, those can require additional authorization forms. So the bottom line is, is that you need to work with a screening partner that can provide all those necessary authorizations and disclosure forms in order to conduct the necessary searches and verifications in the jurisdiction wherever your applicant has lived or worked. Especially in today's remote working environment, we find applicants that have lived in many different states and countries um, that are working remotely and require us to search and screen them in those areas where they have been. This is a great question. How much does a basic pre-employment background check cost? Generally speaking, if you go to an online provider that's, that's doing the bare bones database check, you can find a background check anywhere from 10 to $20, which is fairly worthless. It's just gonna be a national criminal database search um, that it would be procured and developed. If you're doing a, a really basic background check that includes verification of county level criminal records, you're looking anywhere from say 25 to $35. Generally speaking, I can tell you that a general average is around $50 per applicant, assuming you're not doing employment verifications or education verifications or any drug screening. Around $50 all in includes your, your background check as well as any court access fees, DMV access fees, and any other third party costs. Great question. This is a super important question. Does the National Criminal Database search include federal cases? The answer is no. The National Criminal Database is only looking for Superior Court's criminal cases filed in state courts and county courts in available repositories. This is a database driven search only and it does not include federal cases which are filed before the federal courts. So if someone is looking for a federal case, it needs to be an add-on search. It's typically not included in those basic cheap online searches that you would order from a provider on a very low cost basis. Definitely wanna add those. One other thing about federal cases is those cases are often those that come up on a Google search. So if someone is involved in a federal case, which is a pretty serious case involving a crime that, that goes across state lines, like money laundering, drug charges, trafficking, immigration, a Google search will often reveal those. So if you're worried about those high level crimes that don't come up often, but are Googleable, make sure you're adding federal criminal searches to your background screening packages. This is another one that comes up quite often. Is the national criminal search through the FBI and is it up to date? The answer is no. The only folks that have access to FBI databases would be law enforcement 
and those that are running a live scan database. And no, it's not up to date because the repositories in all those different jurisdictions are not updating to the National Criminal Database all the time. So the only real way to do an up-to-date current criminal check would be to looking at state and county level courts, county by county, state by state. Why is the social security trace necessary? The social security trace is a way to try to verify information, person's name, social, date of birth, and address history in order to conduct a background check in the jurisdictions where the person's lived or worked. It also helps us develop alias names that could have been used. And you wanna run those alias names separately to make sure that you're encompassing as much information as possible. The social security number trace is not often shown on the report, but it's a valuable tool to the background researcher to conduct a thorough background check. Should we check alias names or better yet, are we checking alias names? Many clients assume that alias names are included in a background check and they're just simply not. An alias name would be a name that a maiden name or a name that someone used. And when you're conducting a criminal background check in the pre-employment context, you wanna make sure that you're checking for any and all names used by the subject because they could involve in a crime and under another name. And if you're not checking that name specifically, it will not come up. Remember, criminal records are indexed by name and date of birth only. It does not include alias names. So by running the social security number trace, developing those and asking them by the applicant in the, in the authorization and disclosure process is a great way to develop alias names that should definitely be checked as part of your background screening process. These are some frequently asked questions. My guess is if we have clients asking them, you would have those same questions as well. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks.